slow down. You got to slow down and take it easy. Slow down. You got to slow down and take it easy. Oh yeah. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Stogie Review Video Review. I am Walt, and uh, hopefully you're seeing this video on Friday. Uh, if, if it uh, is in fact Friday and you're seeing this video, it means that I got all those things I needed to get done finished, and I was able to get this, this video up last minute. If not, my apologies for the delay. You're probably seeing this on Saturday. Then. But uh, in either case, uh, up for review this week, I have the Arganese uh, Nicaraguan Presidente. And uh, this is one of the very last Argany cigars that I have. And uh, this is actually from the box that I was giving away. Um, I, I gave away several uh, Argany Maduros, and the, I think they were the Maduro chairman and the Nicaraguan Presidente. You know, I heard a lot of good, good feedback back uh, from everyone that received them. They enjoyed the cigars. Um, so, uh, anyway, it's long overdue, and I should probably get to reviewing this cigar before I give out you know, every last one of them, and, uh, and then I end up not reviewing But in any case, the, uh, this, this is uh, available only as a Presidente. And what that means is that uh, Gene Arganese has blended this cigar to be uh, full-bodied only. Now, if you look at, I'm not quite sure about the double wrap of the Connecticut, but I, I'm, I know for sure that if you look at the Maduro, you'll see that it's available as both a chairman and a presidente and what that means is uh, if you get the the chairman variety or the ambassador or whatever it may be actually the, the ambassadors I think the mildest the chairman is a medium body blend the presidente is a full body blend so some of the other cigars are available in different in different uh, levels of body throughout the line and uh, this one isn't it's, it's only available in one uh, but uh, in any case, this has a a, uh, a Nicaraguan Corojo wrapper, which was very difficult to find that information. That comes courtesy of uh, Doc Stogie Fresh. Uh, binder and filler are both Dominican, and uh, this is made in the Dominican Republic in the uh, Arganese Dominicana SA in uh, Santiago, Dominican Republic. And uh, the filler and binder tobacco are are harvested from the mountainous region of Villa Gonzalez, uh, which is known for well, its mountains and uh, its very fertile soil. And uh, these are uh, the crop was harvested. Uh, these were allowed to age for a few years, and uh, now we have the you know, cigars as a finished product. But uh, in any case, I already told you about the meaning of the Presidente. Uh, oh, this is a, a robusto. It is a 50 by five. And the uh, price point is about six thirty nine. I found them online uh, from one vendor, two guys smoke shop for for that price, uh, six thirty nine per single. But uh, in any case, <laughs> the uh, the cigar is not very pretty. Uh, I don't know whether it's just this one, but this is probably the ugliest of the batch, or, or the ugliest of the ones I've seen. It's got some medium-sized veins. They aren't, they aren't very flat. So when you handle the cigar a little bit, you can definitely pick them up. You know, close your eyes and you pick every one of them out. Um, the the wrapper's got sort of a sandy texture. You know, almost like a really fine grit sandpaper. But when you look very closely. It's got tons and tons of these little specks of oil all over the wrapper, which is nice. Uh, a lot of times people refer to that as toothy. And uh, this has got that. It's, it's got tooth. It's, uh, it's got a, a neat little texture to it. And, uh, you know, as, as far as, you know, it's a little ugly. It's a little lumpy. But uh, it feels good for the most part. I mean, there's a couple of soft spots that I found before I turned the camera on. Way down in here by the foot. But uh, as far as that goes, they're only way down here by the foot. Everything else feels pretty good. So um, 
at any rate, it's probably about time for me to take a break. But uh, before I do that, the band. I love this band. This is probably my favorite of uh, all the Argonese bands. The, the silver tone just does it for me. I, you know, I really like, uh, I love this band. The, uh, the crest is on both bands, the, uh, the Argonese crest. And uh, I don't know, I just like it. But uh, at any rate, I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back and uh, we'll dive right in on the first there. so far. Um, the, the initial first couple puffs were, uh, it seemed to be very unbalanced. Uh, th there was a lot of spice, a lot of pepper, the finish was a little rough around the edges. Um, you know, not like oh, like a, a lot of bad stuff, just, uh, I don't know, sort of, like, <laughs> it's, it, there were several uh, small bad things about the cigar that I didn't like that really pushed it over the edge initially. Um, and I say bad as, as far as my tastes go. Uh, there was just a little bit too much spice right off the start. Uh, it was a little rough, a little dry. You know, I immediately got a tingle in my throat. Um, you, know, you know, those sort of things that it just kind of made me say, Ugh, you, know, I, you know, this isn't quite as good as I remembered. But uh, after I got a couple of puffs into it, you know, maybe five or six, uh, everything settled out and, you know, it's, it's been a great smoke, so, it, you know, ever since. Uh, the the bit of a the tad of dryness just went away. It's uh, it's becoming a little creamier. It's uh, smoother on the palate. There's still spice and pepper there, but they're more of uh, a lingering aftertaste. You know, which which kind of come on. I don't know, maybe about a minute after each puff. They're real slow, and uh, the base flavor is just a very rich uh, tobacco flavor. Uh, th there's really nothing complex to it uh, at this point. Uh, aside from the, uh, you know, just a little bit of pepper and spice. And there's also a very, very mild sort of fruity flavor that I'm picking up, which, you know, I like a lot. Uh, it's, it's very muted, and it's buried in the background. And uh, right now I'm pairing this up with, with uh, water. I just put a pot of coffee on, and uh, we're going to see how that goes. The, uh, the coffee that I'm pairing it up with I don't particularly care for, and uh, the reason reason I decided to go with the coffee I really don't care for is that uh, I don't care for it because it's got uh, these underlying fruity flavors and uh, I'm hoping that you know the the underlying fruity flavors in the cigar and the, and those in the coffee will kind of meld together and make you know a really nice combination if not I'll, uh, I'll just dump the pot of coffee and move on and, and go right back to water again but uh, at any rate the um, at, at this point the body is uh, about medium, medium to full. It's uh, the finish is, you know, smoother now. It's uh, I, w I wouldn't say it's very smooth, but it's it's just a touch dry. It's becoming creamier, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. There's just a couple of things about it that uh, you know I kind of like, but I don't like, or or I don't like, but they're getting better. So I don't know. I'm, I'm in a transitional period with the cigar right now, so we'll we can only give it a little bit of time and see how it progresses. But, um, at any rate, just checking the time on the video. We're pretty much on time. But uh, in any case, uh, the construction of the cigar is doing well, or is, is good. The burn line is a little wavy, but it's thin, crisp, and uh, unfortunately I, I asked a cigar before I turned the video camera on, not thinking, but uh, the ash is very tight, firm, compacted, and you know, I really took a, a firm tap to knock it off. 
And uh, the reason being is because I needed to touch up the cigar because I let it sit too long and I went to make a buy of coffee. But in any case, the uh, the color of the ash was striking. It, uh, it it very much matched the band and it looked awesome just kind of hanging there off the cigar. But, um, you know, not that it really means anything, but I don't know, I thought it looked cool. So, at any rate, uh, yeah, I've, you know, babbled on enough. So, uh, <laughs> take a look at some pictures, listen to some music. Uh, courtesy of www.podshow.com and uh, I'll be right back and we start on the second third. the second third and just about into the final third and uh, to be completely honest with you, I, I really think I'm flying through the cigar. It feels like I'm rushing through it for whatever reason. I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but uh, I've been at this for 60 minutes now and you know, so many of these problems. You're probably sitting there thinking, 60 minutes on a Robusto, you're out of your mind, you think you're rushing through that cigar. But uh, I really do. I don't know whether it's the, the placement of the bands and the size of the bands, but I just felt like I, I burned up to the band so quickly. It was just, it was unbelievable. But uh, really, as far as time, as you know, as far as the, the actual time goes, I'm, I'm doing quite well. But um, I don't know, I don't know whether it's just my mood or just the fact that I reached those bands so fast or it seems so fast. I mean, uh, I really haven't been doing anything. I'm just kind of relaxing, puffing away on the cigar take a couple of sips of coffee here and there and really that was the only thing I've done uh, aside from smoke the cigar was uh, go make a pot of coffee but uh, but at any rate it, the, the cigar does feel like it's burning a little faster uh, than, than a typical Robusto does uh, at least for me anyway uh, it seems to be slowing down now the draw is getting a little bit firmer and but the the volume of smoke is still there uh, it's still very generous you get a nice mouthful of smoke it's, it's still very thick and dense uh, easy to get through the sinuses, kind of lingers around the air. I mean, uh, got like a London fog going on in here. But, um, you know, it's, as far as the construction goes, it's nice. The the burn line is no longer a little wavy. It's it's pretty straight. It's very thin, crisp. The the ash still looks great. And I love the color next to the band. But uh, for whatever reason, it really doesn't seem to be hanging on anymore. You know, a couple of times I've picked it up, I've had a little bit more ash than this. You know, which is about I don't know three eighths of an inch. I'll set it down on the on my stinky stirrup, and just the I don't know just the action of placing it on the stirrup is enough to disturb the ash, and off it goes into the cigar. So I don't know whether you know I, I really don't know what to take from it. Uh, when I look at the ash kind of head on, everything looks very tight and compacted, and I really see no reason why it should be falling apart. You know, there's no hollow spots. I don't have any flowering going on. You know, it just it looks like it should, but. For whatever reason, it really isn't holding on. You know, as I had mentioned, each puff, you know, gives a, a nice, generous volume of smoke. The draw is a touch firmer now, but um, excuse me, it, it, it's doing very well. The resting smoke is about medium, you know, about average. Um, I'm not noticing any much of an aroma, uh, so I really couldn't tell you if it's if it's uh, a bit much or if it's mild or whatnot because I really can't tell. The base flavor, or I'm sorry, the body is uh, in the full range, toward the low end. The uh, the finish is getting much more creamy now. I have virtually no dryness anymore, and uh, now I, now I remember why I like these cigars so much. Uh, the, the, it's getting much smoother, it's got a creamy texture to it, it the flavors are very, very rich. 
the, uh, the, the, the predominant flavor I'm getting now, which really seems to be coming on, is from the Corojo wrapper. Um, you know, and if you smoke a variety of Corojo tobacco or Corojo cigars, you, you get to know what, the, what that Corojo tobacco flavor really is. And uh, I'm really beginning to notice it. It's, it's very rich and very tasty. Uh, I'm really liking it. The, the pepper and spice are, are still there as a secondary component. Um, they're beginning to fade a little bit. The, the very mild fruitiness is still there. It's, it's very muted uh, still. Uh, the coffee does bring it out quite a bit, and to be honest with you, I think that uh, this coffee goes very well with the cigar. Uh, I think I'm going to smoke more of these cigars just so I can, I can finish through the rest of the coffee. Um, it's not that the coffee's bad, it's just that I haven't found anything to pair it with. The, uh, the fruity flavors just seem to be a little too strong in the morning. Uh, it's not something I really like to drink in the afternoon. During the evening, I like coffee every once in a while, but... Uh, I don't know. This this particular coffee just doesn't fit anywhere in the in the day for me. It's uh, this Papua New Guinea blend, but uh, I, I really like it with the cigars. It's going very well. But I don't know. At any rate, I'm uh, I'm gonna take another quick break. Uh, take a look at some more pictures. Listen to some more music again by uh, Podshow.com, and uh, I'll be back. We'll start on the final third. Wrap things up. I'll let you be on your way. And uh, really, that's that. So see you in just a second. To the revolution, spend a day in bed. Will you find your solution? Try to imagine what you would have said. Don't let it go to your head. I didn't hear the word that you said. Don't let it show. you can see by the nub. It's uh, about time to wrap up this cigar. And, uh, well, in a nutshell, you know, I, I'm really enjoying the final third uh, the most, you know, of all the portions of the cigar. The, um, the, the smoke rate is, I don't know, it's incredible. I, uh, I went from feeling like I was seriously just charging through this cigar, you know, with no hope in, in hitting an hour, and here I am. 110 minutes later, uh, down to the nub. So that that little bit of firmness in the draw really seemed to extend the smoke time in a dramatic way. Um, the cigar stays cool too, even at this short. I mean, it's a little warm on the fingers, but you know, you can see why. The uh, the volume of smoke is still there. You know, as I mentioned, the draw is just a little bit firmer, but it, you know, it still you know puts out a generous volume of smoke. It's still dense. You know easy to get through the sinuses, it lingers around in the air. Uh, it really doesn't seem offensive and, and I've got quite the cloud going on. As you heard in the first third and as you have heard or all in the in the initial part of the video and as you have heard several times there's a loud noise coming from right behind the camera where I have uh, an air filter set up and I always forget to turn it down and now I've got it on the lowest setting so that it makes the least amount of noise and uh, you know I've got the room pretty smoked up but in any case, unless the fire, the uh, the smoke detector goes off, there's no real, there's no real concern about it. So, the the body is is planted firmly in the full range, you know, still in the, at the low end. The finish gets smoother and smoother as you go, uh, which I'm really enjoying. And uh, the the base flavor it really takes on this really rich, dense Corojo flavor that that, that I'm just really enjoying. Uh, the secondary flavors of pepper and spice are just about gone. Uh, you know, I'm barely picking them up at all. That very, very mild fruity flavor is almost gone as well, but you know, the, the coffee seems to kind of keep it around just a little bit. I think I'm actually tasting uh, more of the fruity flavors in the coffee than I am from the cigar. And while this is a good cigar to begin with, uh, I, I really like it paired up with the coffee. So, uh, if you have the opportunity to try, you know, a coffee from wherever it's from, uh, in this case, it's Papua New Guinea. But if you have the opportunity to try like a, a fruity flavored, not fruity flavored, but if you have the opportunity to try coffee with uh, 
like a fruity aftertaste kind of a thing. You know, I really think you'll enjoy it with the cigar. The, you know, I, I'm just very happy with it. The uh, the construction of the cigar is doing well too. I mean, it wasn't the prettiest cigar I've ever seen. Uh, it looked a little rough and tumbled. It smoked very well. The ash still drops with, you know, very little movement. Uh, I've made a bit of a mess in front of me, but you know, it's. I don't know that I'd, I'd really want to smoke one of these in the car. Although I would enjoy the flavor, I just think it would end up making a mess uh, as I'm driving along. And overall, I. I don't know. I, I would certainly pick one of these up if I happen to find one in a local shop. But again, because they're a small company, it's difficult to find these. You know, as I'm sure you're you're aware if you've seen the other reviews, you know there are a select few places you can find them online. Uh, Two Guys Smoke Shop is one of them, and their prices seem pretty reasonable. So, uh, at any rate. With that said, I, I would definitely recommend picking one up, if, again, if you happen to find one along your travels. Uh, it's got a nice, rich Corojo flavor that really steps up in the final third. You know, the first couple puffs of the cigar just were really rough and hard to get through. But once I did, everything just kind of just smoothed out and, and the flavors got richer. And, you know, before you know it, I'm just really enjoying the cigar. So, uh, anyway, again, at any rate, I uh, hope you enjoyed the review. Love to hear some feedback, and uh, well, until next week. Uh, oh yeah, next week. What am I smoking next week? Um, I think I'm going to be smoking the uh, Padilla Miami next week, the Robusto, uh, which obviously is blended by uh, Don Pepin Garcia or rolled by Don Pepin Garcia uh, until uh, Ernesto Padilla's new factory gets up and underway. So uh, I'm going to try to get uh, one of the Don Pepin blends in. Uh, I've got two. I've had a couple several months ago, but uh, I'm going to smoke one, I'm going to keep another one around, and uh, once Ernesto's factory gets up and running and his cigars are available, I'm going to do a, a comparison, maybe side by side to see you know, if there is any difference, but I really don't think there will be. Uh, at any rate, happy smoking. See you next week.